you know, everybody, I just wanted to talk to you about something, you know, um, basically about pleasing people. I've come to the realization in life that you are not going to be able to please everyone. Okay. You know how many people are on this earth? Do you know how many people that come in and out your life? People that you might have as friends, acquaintances, family members, church family. There are That's a lot of people. And you are not going to be able to please everyone. Um, the Bible says in Romans 12, 18, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. That's the NLT version. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. So with you trying to live in in, in peace with everyone by pleasing them, you have no peace of your own. I can live in peace with you and not have to please you. See, we cannot make our life's goal to please everyone and we don't want to please God it can't be that have you ever realized that there are some people that are going to come in and out your life that you really can't please no matter what you do no matter how nice you are to them because people say you know I'm going to kill them with kindness you just can't please everyone all right. Or you just say, well, you know what I don't want to rock the boat you know I don't want to you're not going to be able to please everyone you're not going to it's just the fact of the matter. But the Bible tells us you don't need to please everyone. Well, Manuela, where does it say that? Proverbs 29, 25. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. NLT version. Fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety. What does that mean in layman's terms? It's, a, it's very dangerous. To be concerned with what others think of you and we're living in a time and age that everybody seems to be concerned about what others think of them they cannot do anything they cannot live they cannot buy the next outfit they cannot go on or uh, do an activity they cannot do anything bec because of fear of what others will think of them but what does God think about you is the question you know, my brother and my sister, you listening to me. What does God think about you? Well, he says in Jeremiah 29, 11, for he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts. What are the thoughts? Thoughts for hope and a future and an expected end. Not for evil, but for good. God thinks highly of you. But we seem to be so concerned about what others think about us. We put our statuses up on social media. Don't matter any type of social media. And if people don't like it, if people don't like our photos, if people don't like our statuses, it seems like our world is crumbling. Because we are concerned about what people think. We buy our clothes because we want to get the approval of others. And it seems that is the main thing. We want approval. And ain't nothing wrong with somebody liking it and giving them that little approval. But when your whole life and your longevity is predicated on if somebody approves it or not, there is a problem there. There is a problem there. That's an emotional trap. When you start worrying about what other people think. That's an emotional trap. And I'm going to tell you straight up, it's foolish. And we all can fall victim to that. It's foolish. That leads to unhappiness. That leads to depression. That's not what God wants. That's not living. When Christ said, you know what? He came to give us life and life that more abundantly. You alive, but you not living because you want to have the stamp of approval of la di da -di And everybody, everybody ain't going to always like you. For every seven people that might pat you on the back, that might say, job well done, I like it. There'll be that one person that said, mm, I don't think it's all that. Well, I don't like it. And it's all right because we are opinionated people. People are entitled to their opinions. As long as you, people have, as long as they have two eyes, two ears, a mouth, they're going to perceive situations how they want. They're going to hear things. How they want and they're going to say what they want God is going to deal with but you cannot live your life on what others think because you 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 you, you, you you'll stop yourself from doing what God wants you to do 
You stop yourself from doing what God wants you to do. Jesus even said in John 5 30, I only seek to please him who sent me. I only seek to please him who sent me. And he was talking about his heavenly father, God. He didn't try to please everybody. And he was very social. He was dealing with a lot of folk. He had the disciples. He had everybody that had different personalities. They had from different backgrounds. They had different persuasions. And he had to deal with people all the time. He was very social. But he could not deal. He could not be able to please everybody. Nor was he trying to. Because he had a focus. He had an assignment. And a lot of you have a focus and an assignment. But you are not fulfilling your assignment. You are not doing what God has called you to do. Because you are afraid of of what people going to say. You're afraid of how people going to think about you. You're afraid of their perception. Understand this. I was at church the other day, y'all. And I tell you, the women of God have just been just pouring into me. And I thank God for the older women teaching the younger women. And you know what? You know what? One of the, one of the ladies said, you know what? People's perception is their reality. You can't stop that. You can't stop that. And I looked at that and I said, wow. I said, wow, that that, 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 that that right there is powerful. You know, Pastor Joe Osteen quoted something. He said, if you try to please everybody, life will be miserable. It, it, if it doesn't match what God has put in your heart, let it go one, into one ear out the other. That's what Pastor Joe Osteen said. If you try to please everybody, life will be miserable. But all you want to do is say, well, you know, I want to live in peace. I just want peace. Yeah, you. while you're trying to live, you, what you really want to do is please. What you want to do is live to please. And while you live living to please, you're not living in peace. Right now, you are in pieces. Because you want to please everybody. Everybody is not going to be pleased. So I pray that this thing encourage you. You got to wake up on today because God has stuff for you to do. And you're not going to please everybody. Everybody not going to like what you're doing. Not everybody going to like what you're doing. Not everybody going to like how you saying stuff. Not everybody going to like how you delivering it. Everybody going to feel this, feel that. And they're entitled to their feeling. You say, thank God for you. Let it go into one ear, out the other. And you stay focused. You stay focused. You know, in Luke 6, 26, Jesus said, woe to you when all men speak well of you. Woe to you when all men speak well of you. What does that mean? What is he really saying? What is he really saying? If everybody is going to speak well of you, 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 in, you in trouble. You in trouble because everybody, everybody is not supposed to like you. Everybody is not supposed to like you. Everybody's not going to like you. Everybody's going to, some people going to just talk stuff. Some people don't even know you, what they heard about you. They don't even know you themselves, what they heard it through the grapevine. Nobody going to, nobody going to know you. Nobody going to speak well of you. And woe to you who everybody speaks well of you. All men speaking well of you, that's a problem right there. You know what? You know, I, I read something from Pastor Rick Warren. He says something I'm, I, I really want to share with you. And I quote this thing to you. He said, if all men speak well of you, that's probably because the only, understand, that's probably because the only time everybody's going to ever speak well of you, anytime anybody's going to ever speak well of you, is going to be at your funeral. That's what Pastor Rick Warren said in one of his devotionals. And I found that. I said, wow. People could hold, people say a whole bunch of stuff. They don't even know you personally. They can say a whole bunch of stuff. But finally, finally, when they go to their funeral and they pay their respects, now you become this wonderful person. You was always this. You was always that. But while you were living, they might not. But it's all right. But you got to stay focused. And we got to come out of this, 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 this chain of trying to please everyone. See, pleasing people and living in peace is not, that does not equate living in peace. I can I, I might not be able to please you in this, this 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 situation or this circumstance, but you know what? We can agree to disagree. It's all right. Life goes on. It's called boundaries, y'all. You can't you can't do that. You can't live your life with that. And that's an, on every level. That's on every level. That's on every level. If it don't line up with what God wants for you. You can't hold yourself. There's a book out there that Pastor Joyce Myers wrote. It's called The Approval Addiction. People, I think y'all need to read that. I suggest that book. That book is that book is powerful. Because everybody not going to approve. But does God approve? 
is the question. Does God approve? The Bible says that many are the plans of man, but God's plans prevail. He has a plan for your life. Let him approve your life. Jesus was approved by God. He was approved by God. That's why when he got when he when he went to go get water baptized, the Bible said that the, the, the angel of the Lord, that there was a dove, the dove that showed. And the, they know he heard a voice from heaven, and it was Jesus. It was God the Father that said, This is my son, who I am well pleased in. Let God approve you. Let him approve you. That's who needs to approve you. Not folk. It's nice. It's beautiful. But that should not stop you from doing what God has called you to do. I tell you, you're chosen. You've been called out to stand out. Stand out. And standing out don't mean that you got to be approved by people. Standing out is very hard. Because that means you got to, you got to fight trying to be approved by people and your need to be approved by folk. Because you've determined in your mind that you've been called out to stand out and that you're chosen. So let's do that thing. Are you ready? Let's go.